Hello and welcome along to Mondo Chalavec Movies. My name is John and this is going to be a look through my entire collection, part two. Now I'm going to hopefully try and get through the rest of the Arrow section today. These are going to be the standard Amore cases. I'm going to try and take you through everything I've got by uh, Arrow. Don't want to focus too long on these uh, on these uh, titles themselves. Just going to give you a quick sort of show. Maybe talk a little bit about some of them. Probably not much on most of them. And uh, also, if I can finish off the arrow section in this one, then you've got a, an idea of what my complete arrow section looks like. So let's get into this. First up is The Forbidden Zone. This is a crazy movie, absolutely nuts. I can't even describe what it's like, but um, I do rate it as a, a, not a noddity. But also it reminds me of a film I don't think many people would have seen called Cafe Flesh, which is a bit wow. And this is along the same sort of lines as sort of musical numbers in there. It just doesn't make any sense, but I do like it for some reason. But I never ever heard of it before, and I don't hear anybody talking about it. The next one is released on 4K at the moment, The King of New York. Now this is the first version. It's quite low on quality. I would imagine that um, the 4K would look spectacular. I must admit, I'm going to upgrade the 4K probably, but it's not an essential one for me. Um, it's going to have to come down in price quite a lot. This film is okay. It's not one of my favourite Abel Ferrara films, but I do think it's alright. It's not bad. Next one is a good fun trauma film, The Class of Newcomb High. Now, some of these might be um, actually out of print. I think this one is, so I, I would love to know which ones are out of print and out, are in print, so I can tell you, but I'm not too sure. Um, but The Class of Newcomb High. Next film is Deadly Blessing. It's a Wes Craven film. I do remember seeing this way back in the day. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't heard many good things about it. It was only about £6 in a, in a CEX, so I picked it up. Next one is another Mario Barva classic. It is Black Sunday. Uh, another one of his, like his classic, classic films. This is a sort of uh, anthology film. And uh, I think there's three, um, there's three actual films in this. The best one is the one with um, this 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 story here, the the dripping tap. I think it's called. It's absolutely brilliant. It's very uh, scary as well. Uh, it's definitely the best one of the three that are on this uh, in this set. Absolutely amazing as Barrio, Mario Barva. Barrio Barva. Next is Baron Blood. Mario Barva again. Uh, another classic, early sort of nineteen seventies um, film that is obviously. That's, I would say that's his best period. Uh, this is when he was at his sort of height in the sort of 60s and early 70s. Next is another Mario Barber classic, Rabbit Dogs. This is one of his later films. Uh, it takes place mainly in a car. It's kind of a, I think it's like a heist movie. It's quite good actually, quite brutal in places. And uh, it's got George Eastman there, who was also Anthropophagus in Anthropophagus the Beast. Try saying that after 10 pints. But it's a nice version as well. Now, I do think you get a couple of versions on there as well. I think you get two versions of the film. Now, the next one is uh, going to be one in a, in a few uh, films from Herschel Gordon-Lewis. And this one is Blood Feast. These ones come with another film as a bonus on here. But uh, this is, I just watched this recently. It's absolutely, just love this film. Uh, it's the first ever, uh, shall we say, gore uh, film. Um, splatter film it's just it's just brutal for the time 1963 but uh, it's amazing and Herschel Gordon Lewis films for me I just love them the next one is another uh, classic from him it's uh, 2000 Maniacs another one of my favorites uh, Arrow have done a really good job on this this is obviously the big box set came out I didn't think I wanted to get that because the good thing about Arrow is if you get a big box set version you know it's going to come out in standard form something along the way and when it did, I was there. It's better. It's easier at the store, actually. It goes on the shelves nice. Um, 2000 Maniacs is, is crazy as well. It's very low budget, very odd. So 2000 Maniacs is very low budget, but it's also very watchable for me. I don't mind a low budget film. The next one is She Devil on Wheels. Now, I hadn't seen this one at all. This is one of the ones that I'd never come across. And uh, it, it is an amazing film for me. I do think that the, the gang, the She-Devils, are just uh, crazy. They're just nuts. And uh, the music in here is very good as well. I love uh, 60s films, music, uh, soundtracks. They're, they're really uh, something else. Next is uh, Colour Me Blood Red. And, uh, uh, this is one of the, the better uh, Herschel Gordon-Lewis films, I feel. Uh, I do think that these ones, uh, of course, the... the the premise behind most of these films is quite stupid and preposterous, but it doesn't matter. They give you a laugh as well as um, take you to another sort of time and place. 
I do uh, I do rate his films very well and and Herschel Gordon Lewis when he gets uh, interviewed he doesn't take his films seriously which is another it's quite fun part of it he's, he's, he was he was a funny guy next one is the gruesome twosome um great title odd film it's about somebody who just uh, obviously kills people and takes the hair off to make wigs for a wig shop uh, and that's the film uh, it's quite uh, low quality actually but I do like the film and some people don't like it but uh, it is what it is and if you understand that these films are bizarre and preposterously low budget you'll get away with these films a lot better next one is the wizard of go I think this was uh, remade actually but I wouldn't remake I wouldn't want these films remade because uh, I do think that they're much better as uh, we were intended next film is one of the last well the last film that uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis shot in the 70s I think he shot maybe two more after this maybe in the in the 90s even or the 2000s this one is 1972's The Go Go Girls it is my favorite one of his movies and the the, the I'm gonna say is like a private eye here I think and he just tried to uh, solve the crime of why all these um, strippers are getting killed uh, his sort of uh, dialogue is absolutely just crazy as the whole film is but uh, very very gory as well and brutal but uh, comedic as well you don't take it even you see people getting all the skin taken off the face it doesn't really look like you know anything bar a really cheap special effect but highly watchable the next one is my favorite horror film of all time and it is zombie flesh eaters now this is otherwise known as zombie i have got the 4k of this but i have kept this because the special uh, features on here are brilliant and i do think as a blu-ray this is an excellent blu-ray uh, it's one of the best ones i've seen it's probably the best version on blu-ray i've seen but the 4k one blows this out the water but i've, I've kept this as a part as like kind of a, a blu-ray i don't really need it need it but uh, i do rate this version very highly next is another lucio fulci classic the black cat now a lot of people don't really have much time for this one and i didn't really know that much about it but when i've watched it i've watched it a couple of times but when i last watched it i thought it was really good it comes across more like a hammer film i think because it was shot in england but uh a lot better than most people would tell you next is a mario another mario barber film it's uh the girl who knew too much you could see this is one of the first ever giallos ever made black and white uh, very early in the 60s and uh, it is a really good film actually all these giallo films the early ones have a very interesting storyline to them and that they take you on a bit of a trip that uh, you wouldn't expect there's a lot of sort of twists and turns in these early giallos absolutely brilliant but the mario barber version of giallo is, is stunning speaking of which uh blood and black lace next mario barber uh this this looks incredible this film it's it's one of these stylistically films that you just look at it and you just think wow that that just looks spectacular now i, I would think this influenced highly dario argento's work because dario argento used to be so good at um setting films up and making them look good blood and black lace must have been a heavy influence in them but this film looks incredible plus the colors in it are just wow another mario barber film kill baby kill this this is okay i wouldn't say it was brilliant i've i've tried to get all of his films i do like all of his films to a certain extent uh, some of them are absolutely stone cold classics other ones are a bit lesser on it kill baby kill was all right it had some good parts in it but it's not as memorable as some of his other films another mario barber film five dollars for an august moon it's another one that's a bit like kill baby kill it's it's good but it's not great uh, i did have a good time with it uh, but sometimes you wonder if uh, these are the bit of the lower mario barva films next one is a one called the night evelyn came from the grave came out of the grave this is a really good giallo that's a brilliant cover that uh, although it doesn't have much to do with the film actually it's just mean like a stylish stylish uh, cover uh, really really good um music on it as well and also it's it's a good really good giallo story i think it's more like a, maybe like a ghost story actually the next one is the red queen kills seven times i think this these two are made by the same director yes these two are done by the same director although I'd, i would butcher his name if i read it out this one here the red queen kills seven times is a really good film the music on here is just utterly brilliant in fact i had the theme tune from this uh, as my ringtone for quite a long time next is 
Death Walks on High Heels by Luciano uh, Ercoli. And this is one of two films that, that is in this uh, section. You could get these on a box set, but I didn't get the box set. didn't get a round with actually. Um, I missed out. Never mind. The box set's lovely, but uh, these ones will do just as good. It's exactly the same thing. All you do is missing is, uh, is packaging. So yes, so that's Death Walks on High Heels. And also, like I said, Death Walks at Midnight. These two are very stylish giallos. Excellent. Next is What Have You Done to Solange? This stars Camille Keaton from uh, I Spit in Your Grave fame or infamy. Uh, it's, a, it's a great giallo actually. Uh, it's it's better than most giallos of this time. It's got it's the, well, the whole premise of it is a little bit uh, brutal actually. And when you find out what what they did to Solange, this is this is what the whole movie is about. But it takes you on some really good turns and twists. Uh, but the film is a little bit more nasty than I thought it was going to be. Next is a sort of sequel to Solange, and it is What Have They Done to Your Daughters? Now, this is a Region A release from Arrow, and this is gifted to me by my good friend John Hall, Hall Goss 73. And uh, it's quite a good film, actually. It's uh, quite explicit in part. It's got some explicit uh, deleted scenes on here. I think that's maybe a little bit why it's not uh, available in the UK. But uh, it's a good film. Is it better than? I think Solange is the better out of the two, but it's still a great giallo. Next is Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key. Wow, what a title. Um, I, I've watched this one, I can't remember too much about it, but I do remember it was quite a decent uh, giallo. Next is another giallo called The Bloodstained Butterfly. I do remember watching this, and another, like, again, I need to watch these some of these films again because uh, it's been quite a while since I've seen them, but I remember this being quite a decent uh, giallo. Next we have uh, starting and getting Vincent Price uh, movies. The first one is House of Usher. Now this, these probably come in the, the Vincent Price box set. Uh, I think some of them do and some of them don't. But uh, I do like Vincent Price a lot and I want to watch these with my wife. When we get a chance we will watch these together. So I probably haven't watched these as much as I do want to watch them. Although I've watched a couple. So that's House of Usher. These are all Roger Corman produced uh, films. Next is the Pit and the Pendulum. I, like I say, I have seen these films a long time on TV, but I haven't seen them. I'm, I'm waiting for my wife, me and my wife, to sort of get the time and watch these together. Next is Tales of Terror. This this has got uh, as well as Vincent Price. It's got Peter Lorre and Basil Rathbone as well. And these are the amazing actors that you used to get in these sort of uh, horror films with at this time. And it used to be great when you got an ensemble cast like this. Speaking of which, next is The Raven with Vincent Price, Peter Lorre and Boris Karloff. Because these actors had a great chemistry together and that's why they made so many films together, actually. The next one is The Haunted Palace. And this has uh, Lon Chaney in it. So that's good. And that would be Lon Chaney Jr. It wouldn't be Lon Chaney because I think Lon Chaney had, been, had died by this point. But uh, yes, uh, these are these are all ones like I say. I need to watch these ones with my wife, and she doesn't want to watch them. I will watch them myself. Next is the Comedy of Terrors. This stars. It's got a stellar cast of Basil Rathbone, Boris Karloff, Peter Lorre, and Vincent Price. Just, just absolutely amazing to get these uh, people together as they are in uh, these these sort of group of films. I did used to watch these a lot on TV, and uh, I enjoyed the whole lot of them. Next is Tomb of Ligeia. I do remember watching this um, on TV and I remember being really kind of spooked by it but remember I was watching these when I was about six and seven, four too young, used to watch all of these things on a Friday night or a Saturday night on TV, double bill on uh, Friday nights but they were just uh, amazing to watch and it used to petrify us to be honest and this is one of the ones that used to petrify us but I can't remember why. I need to rewatch it obviously but it was a no brainer to get it. This next one, Theatre of Blood is a really good creepy film I find and uh, starring Vincent Price and Diana Rigg and the in here there's a I keep talking about this there's an episode here where it's I'm just gonna say poodle pie and uh, my wife uh, yeah my wife absolutely hates the thought of this film and she will never watch it she watched it once and she was sick to her stomach watching it Next up is Horror Hotel. Now most of these uh, these covers have flipped the covers on the here actually, so I've got I've took the age rating off them. That's why you're seeing more of the uh, the alternative art. But I do like the alternative art on here. Horror Hotel is uh, an early Christopher Lee film. 
Uh, I haven't watched it, but when I've flicked it on, had a look at it, it looks very uh, 60s-ish, you know, like with the, the talk, you know, and the, the, the slang that you use. It's uh, interesting to watch that one. Do like the title though, Horror, Horror Hotel. Next is Horror Express. Basically the thing on a train. If you haven't seen it and don't know about it, just think of the thing, a block of ice, uh, finding this, this thing in it. And it's on a train that gets let loose. It's it's a brilliant film. Of course it stars uh, Christopher Lee and Peter Cushion, who were two of the, 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 the most amazing actors in the horror genre ever, in my estimation. Next is The Hound of the Baskervilles. This is a, a Sherlock Holmes film and uh, I haven't watched it yet, but I do want to watch this, my wife, because she does like sort of things like that, Sherlock Holmes and whatnot. Next is a real classic for me. I didn't know anything about this film when I watched it. I thought, I just love this film. It is Spider Baby. Now this, you'll never see a film like Spider Baby. I urge anybody who, who likes these sort of weird 60s uh, movies that you can't put in a pigeonhole, check this out it's like the monsters on acid it's absolutely brilliant and uh, highly highly recommended to anybody who likes odd films next up is jack hill's pit stop now this is a movie i didn't know anything about and i picked these one up probably in a sale and it does star sig sid haig as well who i love sid haig and uh, he's brilliant in here as well plays a sort of despicable character which he was very good at and uh, it's quite a decent watch actually Next one is the one I watched, uh, I'd watched years ago, then I re-watched recently and I, I thought it was, I didn't know if I was going to like it, but I, I did absolutely, I, th I think it was absolutely brilliant. It's The Honeymoon Killers. This is a kind of based on a true story, but really happened. And it is a really well done, kind of, kind of nasty film in a way. And uh, these two actors in here, especially the lady there, they play amazing parts. So highly, highly recommended that one. It seems to me it's more like a um, an Arrow Academy release, if I'm honest. Next one is Doctor Fibes, another Vincent Price classic. I consider uh, I do consider Vincent Price's horror films always. I always used to enjoy them, no matter what they were. The Tingler is one that was my favourite. I haven't got it, but I really want to get that soon. This is the sequel now. Doctor Fives rises again. Uh, I can't remember which deaths are in which but i do remember having some really good uh, sort of deaths in it if you can think of it like well kind of a little bit like an early jigsaw uh saw films it's got nothing to do with like traps or anything it's just that people die in there uh, like terrifying ways which is all right up my alley next is a funny film called count yoga vampire and this has got the other film on here as well uh which is the um the sequel and I can't, The Return of Count Yoga, which I don't find that much of a good film, but Count Yoga Vampire, the first one, is an absolutely brilliant film. I love it. Uh, I'm watching it on TV and, and think it was brilliant then. So I'm so glad to get it on uh, Arrow, and it's, it's a good copy as well. Next is Deranged. I'm sure this is on the video on Nasty's list, and it's sort of a take on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in a slight fashion. Uh, it follows this, this bloke who's really like Ed Gein, and he sort of kills people and he's uh, got a mother fetish and all this type of thing and he, you know it's got a lot to do with digging people up and, and all this type of thing with dead bodies but i think it's a it's, it's a really good film actually and it also stars this fella here who is the the man who sweeps the snow on uh, home alone believe it or not the lovely old man is playing this deranged killer so good film actually i hope those don't fall down they're looking a bit precarious Next is a great black exploitation film called Coffee. It's to me, it's the best film that Pam Grier has done in this genre. It's quite brutal as well, and and some of the uh, the sort of things that happen in it. Also, Sid Haig is in here as well, and he plays a, another despicable character, which is brilliant. He's great at doing this. Sure, he's a sort of a pimp. So next up is Black Mama, White Mama, another black exploitation film with Pam Grier, and I haven't watched it yet. And a lot of these ones I've probably got in sale. And I'm just busy getting around them. I've amassed a, a big library of Arrow films. And it's, it's just finding a time and a place to sort of get these films watched. But uh, it's got everything going for it, put it that way. Next up is Jordan from Movie Worm's favourite film. And it is Island of Death. Personally, I love this film. I think it is so out there, so bizarre, so nasty. So, um, you know, the, the characters in here are really, really dislikable. But I, I think that's why I like it, actually. It's quite uh, graphic in its content. I'm only joking, Jordan. I know you cannot stand this film. So I know that Jordan said this is the worst um, film that he owns. Uh, personally, I, honestly, I do 
I do think it's brilliant. I can understand why somebody wouldn't like it though. It's very, uh, uh, it's 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 just a strange film, uh, and it's not the best of films. But I just for some reason I just like it. Next is a film that I didn't think I would like on second watch. I didn't really like it at first watch actually, and I watched it on the Arrow one, thinking, well, is it going to be one that I would have to keep it just for its notoriety? But I thought, is it going to be something that's going to be one that I would ever watch again? It's the Driller Killer. But on rewatch, I've got to admit, I really like this film much more than I thought I would do. It's uh, a much better film, much better made film than I thought previously. Uh, it's not as brutal as it sort of depicts. This is a great character, uh, great picture, this uh, cover on here. Probably one of the ones that got it, that started the whole Video Nasties band, banning thing for this character, this cover. Got a lot of uh, films banned because if they had a sensationalistic cover, they were just immediately taken off. And some of them weren't even that bad, actually. But this one, it's not it's not as gory as you would think from that, uh, that obviously that is a gory scene. But it's a much better film than I thought it was going to be, plus the uh, arrow print on here is absolutely amazing next is a toby hooper film called eaten alive this is a really funny film because i remember seeing it on a really awful vhs copy and i didn't like it that much i didn't think it was that good and when i've watched it on this one it's got a a really weird way that the, the most of it's shot on a, a sound stage and it's got some really good lighting on it and it's a much better looking film than i ever thought it was going to be so uh, it's much it's much better than i thought it was in general so it's a much more enjoyable film this time around but highly recommended actually the next one is one that was on the video nasties list and i hadn't seen it and it was one of the ones that was really hard to get a hold of it is the witch who came from the sea now, I watched this, and to be honest, for most of it, I thought, man, it's not that bad. But after watching the whole film and realising what it was all about, um, I did come to think this film was quite a decent film. And uh, the actress who plays the uh, main character, she's amazing in this film. So, uh, for me, it's it's a decent watch, actually. It's not, not a, it's, it is, it has got elements. I can understand why, why it was banned, put it that way. The next one is The Incredible Melting Man. This one has special effects by Rick Baker, who did the special effects on american world from london so you can tell it's going to be amazing already uh some of the effects in here are really uh really quite gory and quite brutal and um, it was 1977 and i think it's a lot more graphic than most films from 1977 are but highly recommended and the special effects in it are absolutely brilliant next one is the one i got in the sale but i haven't watched it yet it's scalpel uh, i just like the cover on here it could be good it could be bad i don't know uh, but i'm interested to see what it's all about just haven't got around to it yet Next one is one of my favourite covers of all time, actually, because I flipped I flipped this one around, actually. I had to flip it around. It is 1975's Rollerball. The film itself, is, I find, is a brilliant film. Um, yes, it has got a little bit more storyline than you would want. The, the Actually, the best sequences in here are the Rollerball tournaments themselves, which is just really, really good. Um, I just couldn't get enough of this cover. I used to walk past this cover when it was on air and billboards and just stare at it for ages. Just loved everything about it. Used to get some great um, sort of cinema uh, pictures at the time, uh, posters, should I say? So your Rollerball from 1975, a brilliant film, and I think it's coming out. It is out in 4K somewhere in the world, Germany. So I'd love to see a 4K remaster on this. So I'd love to see a 4K on this. This isn't a 4K remaster, but uh, I would love to see Arrow or somebody pick it up because it's if they can do a 4K in Germany, there's obviously got to be a 4K in the world somewhere. Next is a film called Mark of the Devil. I'm pretty sure this got banned as well. Um, but I know it is really graphic in uh, its depiction of sort of torture. And I was surprised to see this one getting through actually uncut. But it's uh, it's a decent film actually. It's got Udo Kier in it as well, who was, I'm a big fan of Udo Kier. And um, I th I'm pretty sure this is, a, this is an early, maybe even 1974, but it, wow, is it brutal. Next up is Motel Hell. Haven't, I have seen this one a long time ago, and I, I did like it, but I haven't seen this one on rewatch uh, on, on Arrow. These are these are all ones I've picked up in sales with a view to watch them in the future, but I know these are the type of films I've bought them because I know I will like them. Pretty much sure that I like them first time round, and I like to get these in my collection. So if they don't, if they don't work for me now, I will get rid of them, but um, I urge anybody who's thinking about getting an Arrow title, and you see it cheap maybe on CAX, pick it up. Have a check of it, you'll always get your money back on it and uh, sometimes you'll be surprised at how good some of these films are. Next is the film, I'm sure this is out of print, Squirm. This is another film that I used to 
look at uh, on the billboards and think I've got to see that film it's 1976 I believe and it's a it's a film that you think why well, um, it's really good actually I, I didn't think it was going to be this has got another um, some absolutely brilliant special effects is it Rick Baker I'm not too sure but it's the special effects in here are absolutely sort of next level about these sort of killer worms that like devour you um, brilliant though but I'm pretty, sh pretty sure this is out of print now Next is another slasher called Madman. I didn't know anything about this one when I got into it. I knew it was probably a band, I think it was a band horror film, but it's a really good film. Uh, I do think the killer in here is absolutely amazing and it is uh, it is a 4K transfer, I thought it was, because it does look stunning on uh, on Blu-ray. Next is the film that I got and I thought Madhouse. I thought this is gonna be good. The cover was excellent. It, to be honest, it's all right. I think I could see the twist coming a mile off and it wasn't the best of films and it's another one of these arrow ones that never seemed to be in a sale so I pick it up when it wasn't a sale and it was it was okay next to the one that has an absolutely amazing print on it it's the Slayer and this is yes it's a 4k scan I knew it was because it just looks so good the film itself is good it's not great it's not as good as it sort of kind of its reputation got it was another band horror film uh, I can see the reason why it was banned, sort of, uh, but it's. I think it's quite quite watchable. It's quite a good film, but it's not as uh, bloodthirsty as, and as shocking as you might think for a, a vi banned video nasty. The next film was also a banned video nasty, and it is The Burning. I remember watching this at. Uh, there was times when, believe it or not, when I could go out, when we could go out as school kids uh, in the middle of school, you would go and hire something from the video library and you watch it on a sort of free period in, in school. The teacher would hook the VHS up and you would just go out and buy anything you want or rent anything you want. So I remember one of the ones we rented, apart from I think The Evil Dead was one, we rented The Burning as well, which uh, we loved. And I think it's, I always have that memory of watching it in the chemistry class believe it or not uh, the, te the the teacher Mr Flynn he said go out and get something and don't get something that's too bad so he thought <laughs> and we went out got this one and uh, I remember when there's nudity on the screen the teacher's got his book and he's sort of putting against the um, the uh, the screen of the uh, the TV and uh, we were laughing my heads off so I mean can you imagine that happening now wow but anyway I do like this film it's got loads of nostalgic uh, meaning to me as well so the burning Next up is a brilliant film. This is, I flipped the cover, but I consider this to be called Nightmare City. I've talked about this before. It's so bad, it's good. I just find this just a just a romp that you've got to see. Uh, don't go in expecting anything brilliant, but you will ex you will get, it will deliver on a lot of levels, mainly just for just a completely daft action film with ultra bad special effects and an ending which is just unbelievable. Next up is The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. This is a 1978 remake. And to be honest, I haven't watched this yet on uh, the Arrow disc, although I've watched it plenty of times on TV back in the day. And uh, I did like it, but I need to watch this again. I know a lot of people put this highly up in one of their, in their favorite films of all time. Next one is the one that I got. I don't know if I, I'm too much into this film. I, it was another one It was cheap uh, in CEX, so I thought, why not? It's got all the booklets in it and everything, so I thought I'll go for it. And uh, I haven't heard great things about it. It does star Betty Davis, who is somebody that I don't really care for as an actress, if I'm honest. Uh, but it's got Oliver Reed in, who I'm a big fan of Oliver Reed. Um, so anyway, I'm prepared to give it, I'm prepared to give all these a shot. But if it doesn't work for us, I can always sell it. The next one is a really good film, uh, The Beast Within. The special effects in here are absolutely amazing. I would imagine this is this is another sort of Rick Baker type uh, affair because the effects are just the transformation scenes are brilliant. Um, the film's a great film, and also is it a 4K remaster? I don't think it is, but uh, it's it's highly watchable. Uh, and as, if you like sort of um, like transformations, body horror sort of things, The Beast Within is a brilliant film for that. The next one is the one that me and my friends used to get out all the time in the video library and it is The Microwave Massacre. Uh, I just love this film. Yes, it's not the best film. It's it's pretty ridiculous actually and the acting in it is pretty bad. Um, but I just, you know, just some, when you've got some fond memories of the film and when Arrow said they were gonna put this out, I couldn't believe it. The picture is actually quite good in here, but I do love this film. I just think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, I've loved this film since I've first time I saw it, even though it's not for everyone's taste. I think when you're some, sometimes just films just connect with you for some reason, but I just love this film to death. Mm. 
Next is a film called The Initiation. I haven't watched this one yet, but it's your typical sort of um, high school thing where you know people have got to go through initiation rites. I don't know anything really about this one. I don't know if it was banned or, or whatever it was. Um, I don't remember even seeing this back in the day, but I'm interested to see it. But it's another one that I got cheap in a sale and uh, it's, it's on my massive to watch list. So the last one in this section is going to, and I thought I would get through all of my arrow ones so as you can see, I've still got more arrows to go. I thought I would get through all these, but it would be far too long for this part if I if I if I did the whole lot in one go. So anyway, this is the last one in this part, and it is a strange film. It's called Malatesta's Carnival of Blood. I've watched this. This film is ultra low budget. I think it's maybe from 1972. Um, it doesn't really make any sense, and I got it cheap in CEX. I think it was only about six pounds, but why am i keeping it i'm keeping it because in essence it was quite a good film i did watch the special features on it and did sort of get the film although it's odd uh, i will probably watch it again definitely uh, will i watch it and keep it again i don't know but at this point i do feel like i need to watch it again just to see what it was all about really okay so thanks once again for watching this uh, this section and hopefully i'll be doing more sections periodically i don't know if i'll do these all in one go because my channel will probably be saturated by these and you'll probably be sick to death of them um in forthcoming if i do it all the time but i will get them all as as best i can i'll do them quite regularly so these i don't fall behind on this uh, in this series at all so anyway thanks for watching appreciate you taking the time out you take care and i'll see you in the next video